Dearest watchers, hello and welcome. My name is Ash and I find myself here today burdened with an incredibly serious topic that must be brought to light. We need to talk about bug snacks. We need to talk about the horrific reality disguised by a sickly sweet wrapper, a disturbing chain of events coloured with a pastel palette, a would-be children's tale mutated and transformed into a terrifying reflection of our own worst fears. If you thought Bug Snacks was for the faint-hearted, then buckle up, my friends, as this is no laughing matter. Bug Snacks is a horror game, and we're about to dive headfirst into this shocking reality. In the same way Bug Snacks centers a tenacious journalist as our protagonist and the lens through which we experience this world, so do I come to you with my research and findings. I will begin this fervent expose on PlayStation's biggest secret by recounting my own experience. But do be warned, endgame spoilers lurk ahead. Whilst everyone in the office was elsewhere engaged with the colourful charm of Astro's playroom or the breezy combat of Demon's Souls before launch, I was doing real work. Toiling, grinding, slaving in Snacksburg, the black heart of this fiendish operation. Frenzied by the sight of sentient food, I fell into the tireless pursuit of bug snacks. Hypnotised by their charming theme song and quirky mannerisms, convinced by the incredibly suspicious Philbo to capture these creatures and bring back his friends to an eerie ghost town settlement they once lived in together. The sign might say Snacksburg, but it might as well read Abandon Hope or Ye Who Enter Here in Grim Truth. Long was I under its bewitching spell, living by the mantra of eat, sleep, bug snacks, repeat until the platinum trophy popped to give me sweet release. And only then could I look back at my journey and see the winding path of darkness I'd been taken on. And oh boy, was it winding and dark. But yes, the horror. Let me break this down into easily digestible portions, beginning with the transformative premise of bug snacks that drives everything in this godforsaken place. I think no argument needs to be made that Bug Snacks, whether you like it or not, is a Cronenbergian nightmare in its purest form. The game focuses on creatures composed of part bug, part snack, that live on a distant Snacktooth Island as recently discovered by explorer Lisbert Megafig. Here, Lisbert and her expedition consume these strange creatures to sustain themselves, finding their bodies changed to match whatever they eat in the process. With Lisbeth missing and the camp disbanded across the island in pursuit of food by the time our protagonist finds their way there, it is up to the player to capture bug snacks, feed the population, and bring them back together again to bask in their newfound body modification, and eventually locate Lisbeth. Firstly, that these little critters transform the bodies of those that eat them into their own design just solidifies the whole David Cronenberg body horror special to an unfathomable degree. Videodrome, anyone? Long live the new flesh feels pretty literal when these people, or grumpuses, a species of Muppet-like beings more accurately, are exchanging their limbs, torsos, hair, and even teeth for bug snacks in all of their forms. And are more than happy to do so. One character even declares, You haven't lived until you've tried one! Suggesting some transcendent experience tied to the foodstuff that feels uncomfortably akin to brainwashing, as they devolve into monstrous creations of a design you can pick as you feed them. Soylent Green has nothing on this stuff. Your island friends become more bug snacks than Grumpus as they're infected, for lack of a better word, with an entity that assimilates them into its preferred form in what feels pure homage to the thing or the fly. We are what we eat, yes, but what happens when we eat so much that what we eat is us? Real talk. Let it be noted that eating these bug snacks is only possible by consuming the creatures whole, raw, and alive, as any other method of preparing them results in them turning into mush, as revealed by Wambus. Yes, that means every cute little strappy and anxious shishka bug you feed your friends is as aware as a bug snacks can be of being guzzled in some sick twist. And they are aware, despite having no organs like an animal nor seeds like a plant. Since these creatures have things they love and hate and react to your presence depending on their comfort levels. I will go into the makeup of bug snacks in more spoilerific detail later, but for now, I am arguing that the horror bar is already set way higher than you'd think on first glance of this title. But still, the first glance is pretty horrific. Even more so if you accidentally walk into the campfire when first entering Snacksburg, as I did, and witness the genuinely unnerving fire graphics that take over the screen as your grumpus panics uncontrollably. The game's opening is indicative of the sort of understatedly creepy place Snacktooth Island is, as we sail through stormy skies before being knocked down to the ground to face a dark, ominous cave. It's a typical horror movie opener, throwing us straight into the creepy action sans context before we fall unconscious off a cliff as a monstrous flying pizza fills the screen. And then we're given the gift of a flashback to the reason we find ourselves in this hellscape in the first place. 
found footage horror fills the frame as famed explorer Lisbeth Megafig talks down the lens of a sepia-toned camera, creating a tape sent to our protagonist's office, compelling them to come and report on bug snacks. Sound familiar to say, oh, I don't know, the videotape MacGuffins of Blair Witch 2016, Grave Encounters 2, Resident Evil 7, the driving email of Outlast? Lisbeth is the reason everyone on this island has made the treacherous journey. Her cult of personality going to any lengths to be near her. A greater mistake than any would guess at this point. Now, I really do have to take a moment to talk about this so-called Snacktooth Island being littered with corpses. Ranging from odd bones to full skeletons, everywhere you go in Bug Snacks will have some reminder of death and decay laid out to observe whilst you're trying to capture cutesy snacks to survive. With the edges of the island littered with abandoned shipwrecks of Grumpus's long past that tried and failed to make their mark on Snacktooth Island. Where did they come from? Why are they all dead? Just whose bones are these anyway? All questions with partial answers, making these ominous skeletal set pieces all the more disturbing. Archaeologist Triffany, a member of the expedition you must return to camp, hunts for bug snacks biology by obsessing over these remains. Speaking of dead bodies disappearing in the middle of the night, ancient caves decorated with Grumpus history, and the mysterious case of her late relative who travelled to Snacktooth Island and never returned. On the surface, it's all Indiana Jones, but dig deep and it's the descent. Implications of caves of ravenous, flesh-eating bug snacks hinted at lurking on the fringes of this island should a Grumpus explore too far. And I mean, that's actually not far off by the time you reach the endgame, but more on that later. And just as a quick side note, you have to feed Triffany a Ribblepeed as a quest point. Feed Triffany or any Grumpus nothing but Ribblepeeds, however, and they will transform into a grotesque mishmash of charred flesh and oozing bones. A walking horror show made up of meat as they chirply go about their business. The juxtaposition is weird as all hell. Anyway, every Grumpus has a set of side quests in this way. Sibling scientists, Floofty and Snorpy in particular, both dish out island adventures ripe with sinister implications. The very cutely named Floofty has cannibalistic tendencies that are joked about by the others on the island, but it is actually confirmed this is true with a one-time Grumpus eating session mentioned in passing. Floofty is also driven by nothing but scientific intent, insofar as wanting to test the theory that bug snacks have regenerative qualities that can be tapped into should they cut off their own head. This is a plan they attempt with a giant circle saw contraption, no less, in the middle of camp, stopped only when their brother rushes in to halt the machine and convince them it is maybe not the best idea. Childish games or literal saw traps that kind of tread the ground of Reanimator. I don't think I need to tell you which one here. There's an undeniable edge to the camp as each character returns, with this collection of people all endlessly spouting their unhappiness and how they've failed at regular life so badly they have sought out a new one on Snacktooth. Even here, though, the Grumpuses struggle to escape themselves, with each one never quite succeeding at what they set out to do, no matter how good their intentions. Lovable jock Chanlo will never be strong enough to protect boyfriend Snorpy. Farmer Wambus continually fails to produce a viable harvest, and motivational speaker Shelda can barely convince herself of her own wisdom, never mind anyone else. Completing each of the separate quest lines for all of the characters never actually resolves their problems, with sad resignation always the vibe after doing a load of graft to make them happy. I mean, do I need to bring up Floofty trying to cut off their own head again, or are we good on that one? There's a vibe that feels reminiscent of creepypasta Candle Cove, of media made for children turned dark and disturbing, just without ever pushing it so far as to be inappropriate. I mean, besides the whole head cutting off thing. Did I mention that? If, for some reason, what I've told you so far still has you saying, but Ash, is this cutesy video game delight really a horror title? <laughs> then be prepared to eat your shameful questions like a ketchup-covered bunga. Bug Snacks gets real as the main story progresses, with the ending serving as some cataclysmically horrifying amalgamation of Grumpus, Bug Snacks, and everything in between as we learn the secrets of this evil place. As you collect the Grumpuses, players will have regular campfire breaks as the camp inhabitants share scary stories of what they think is out in the dark. The Ghost Stories main questline sees everyone share experiences about giant monsters watching from the trees, before the fire goes out and inhuman or in Grumpus, moans cut through the night. It is pure scary stories being told in the dark vibe, man boils over into actual, full-blown, terrifying reality by the time we reach the closing arc of the story. After locating all of the Grumpuses and celebrating the majority of the camp getting back together, it's time to get Lisbeth. A rush to the frozen peak, an unlocking of an ancient door, and a tumble through unstable flooring leads us to… the Undersnacks. 
here, the truth of Booksnacks comes out in all of its repugnant glory. Surrounded by squashed and slimy snacks that line the walls of this hellhole you've fallen into, like a far squelchier version of the Parisian catacombs a la As Above So Below, it is clear that this place is some sort of belly of the beast, a cavern made up of the creatures that live on the island in some living hall of horror. You're forced to trek through these tunnels of bug snacks viscera, winding and folding like a digestive tract, reminiscent of the ending sequence of the Borderlands, to reach wherever Lisbeth might be. But of course, you're not alone in this treacherous den of edible evil. Hunted by the snack squatch that roams the halls, you come face to face with a horrifying jigsaw puzzle of bug snacks put together to resemble Grumpus form, with a wrong turn down the undersnacks tunnels resulting in this lecherous beast coming straight for you. Frankengrump in its truest form. The Snack Squatch is nothing, however, compared to what comes next. Tumbling down through the Undersnacks and into what appears to be an ancient ritual chamber packed with the creatures of the island, a gigantic beast stands before you, transforming as unstable waves of bug snacks parts ripple down each of the limbs, with none other than Lisbert planted firmly in the middle. Oh, oh no. She has become queen of the bug snacks, at one with this island of horrors in a chimera of ungodly body parts composed entirely of these insectoid foodstuffs. It is here that we learn the sickening truth of bug snacks. They're parasites, actually intent on transforming whoever visits the island into their kind through consumption. It is no accident that these creatures assimilate whatever eats them into sharing the same bodily features, and if you engorge yourself, you become them entirely. No more mind, no more body, just bug snacks. What was once seen as cute fruits and bashful burgers are actually revealed to be concocting masterminds of murderous proportions. Their tasty flavours the same as the beguiling light of an anglerfish in the deep oceans that trick prey into their open jaws. Lisbert, freakish monster that she's now become, discovered the truth by landing in the undersnacks whilst exploring the island, learning that the whole place is constructed of bug snacks and nothing more as they take over everything in their path. So what does this mean for everyone that has been eating the damn things the whole way through the game? Well, that they're in grave danger of turning into bug snacks entirely, as the frenzied creatures now rise up to take over Snacksburg and finish what was started as soon as the expedition ate their very first snack. My friends, you didn't think this was a horror game? Oh, how wrong you are. The attack on Snacksburg, the snacks apocalypse, if you will, results in a fierce battle between Grumpus and Snack to survive. And it is here that all of your choices are laid out before you until dawn style. If you did not care for your Grumpuses and complete their side quests in an effort to better their lives throughout the game and do not fight valiantly enough against their tasty enemies during this sequence, they'll give up. They will stand there, allowing bug snacks to jump in their mouths and complete the metamorphosis, before giving a sad line of dialogue about how they really have nothing left to live for and then crumbling into food and dust in front of your very eyes. Plainly, the Grumpuses can and will die, and it will be all your fault. And that is where I shall leave my terrifying tale once and for all. Bug Snacks is a world packed full of transformative terrors like nothing else, with dark, earth-shattering secrets barely buried in its shallow sands. This is a game about personal growth and helping those around you that might be struggling to help themselves. But there's no comfortable landing should you let them fall into their own swirling psyches and let their sadness take over. Grim reality casts a black shadow over this children's colouring book world that no amount of funny voices and cute customizable food friends can shake. Bug Snacks embraces the good, the bad, and the weird of its creation, and makes something essential and scary in the process. There's a lovely moral lesson here about growing and accepting every part of yourself to become the best you can be, and a terrifying punishment for anyone that tries to fill the hole in their soul with anything other than self-love. Bug Snacks is scary as hell, man, because it toys with very real emotional turmoil, dressed in an outlandish costume of possibilities. Truly, it is a title worthy of endless praise and discussion, and one I love very, very much. And that is, of course, because it is a horror title. No question about it. Omne vivum ex Bug Snacks, as those who know will know. And remember, two quid edas. Until next time. And that is the end of my magnum opus. If you enjoyed this video, then please do drop us a like and subscribe, and tell us what you think of Bug Snacks in the comments section below. I've been Ash, this has been PlayStation Access, and we'll see you again very soon. Bug Snacks. PlayStation.